Nick Scripp from Fantrax with my fantasy football starts of the week for week two to smash those projections. At quarterback, we have Anthony Richardson, who plays the Houston Texans this week. They were the worst run defense in the league in 2022, and they looked the same in week one this year. The Ravens in week one totaled 110 yards and three rushing touchdowns against the Texans. Lamar Jackson finished the game 17 for 22, which was a 77.27 completion percentage. Week one, Deion Jackson was terribly inefficient. They might get Zach Moss back, but I think it's this guy, Anthony Richardson, that is going to rush for 75 plus yards in week two. It's in his skill set. We know it. He also threw the ball for 223 yards last week. Love him against the Texans. Speaking of being inefficient, Rashad White in week one was not good, plain and simple, but I think he bounces back week two against Chicago. In week one, Aaron Jones tore up the Bears. He tore him up last year as well. Chicago struggled against the run in 2022, and it's not looking great right now. Aaron Jones in week one rushed the ball nine times for 41 yards. That's 4.6 yards per carry. He rushed for a touchdown. He also caught two passes for 86 yards and a touchdown. Although White was bad in week one, it was encouraging to see him play 79% of the snaps and touch the ball 19 times. So against Chicago, who has struggled against the run, I like Rashad White to have a good week. If you roster Josh Jacobs, you are playing him every week. But I do like him a lot this week against the Bills. Even though he didn't perform great for fantasy in week one, it was encouraging for him to see those workhorse numbers. He had 21 total touches. This was last year's rushing leader. Week one against the Bills, Aaron Rodgers left the game early with that horrible injury. Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook ended up combining for 23 attempts and four receptions. Hall rushed for 127 yards, tore the Bills up in that game, and I think this week Josh Jacobs can do the same. Last week, the Texans 6'4", 216-pound wide receiver Nico Collins caught six passes for 80 yards against the Ravens, which makes me think of a similar size guy, 6'4", 218-pound T. Higgins. T. Higgins had a horrible week. He didn't catch any passes. He was targeted eight times. But we have to remember this guy has had three seasons over 100 targets, back-to-back -back seasons over 1,000 receiving yards. He's one of the best team wide receiver two in the league. And I think against the Ravens, Joe Burrow is going to get right, and so is T. Higgins. Week one against the Lions, Patrick Mahomes connected with MVS twice for 48 yards and Justin Watson twice for 45 yards. The combination of those two guys would be four catches for 93 yards with an average of 23.25 yards per catch. Who comes to mind when it comes to Seattle? DK Metcalf. Geno Smith connected with DK three times for 47 yards. That's 15.1 yards per catch. And he scored a touchdown last week. If we're looking at deep shots, Big yards per catch numbers against Detroit, DK Metcalf. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week one beat the Vikings, but it was a typical Justin Jefferson day. He had nine catches for 150 yards. Also, though, rookie Jordan Addison caught four passes for 61 yards in a touchdown. So that combines for over 200 receiving yards from just those two wide receivers alone. I think DJ Moore was shut down week one against Jair Alexander. He caught two targets for 25 yards. This, though, is the DJ Moore that is going to be Justin Fields' alpha. This is the DJ Moore that's had four straight seasons of 118-plus targets and three seasons over 1,100 receiving yards. Justin Fields passed the ball for 37 times last week. That's good. It shows signs of volume through the air in Chicago, which we didn't think was going to happen. I think this is a get-right game and a good matchup for DJ Moore. In 2022, Tennessee was an extremely friendly wide receiver matchup, and it carried over into week one of 2023 against the Saints. Chris Olave caught eight passes for 112 yards. That's 14 yards per catch. Rashid Shaheed caught five passes for 89 yards. That's 17.8 yards per catch. And Michael Thomas caught five passes for 61 yards. That's 12.2 yards per catch. Keenan Allen is the primary target for Justin Herbert. But I think it was encouraging to see that although Mike Williams left the game briefly, Quentin Johnson only played 27% of the snaps and was targeted three times. So when we're looking at the yards per catch numbers of what happened last week with the Saints, I think that applies to Mike Williams, who we know can make big plays and I think will against the Tennessee Titans this week. The last wide receiver here will be Nico Collins against the Colts. In week one, Calvin Ridley caught eight balls for 101 yards and a score. Zay Jones caught five passes for 55 yards and a score against the Colts. 
Both Nico Collins and Robert Woods caught six passes in week one from C.J. Stroud, with Collins finishing with 80 receiving yards in that one. Collins led the Texans with 11 targets, which makes me think that he is C.J. Stroud's number one guy. So the success of the Jacksonville Jaguars wide receivers in week one makes me think that it's going to translate for Nico Collins in week two. And for my tight end selection, I like Luke Musgrave, the rookie for the Packers against the Falcons. In week one, Hayden Hurst was the Panthers' leading receiver across the board. He caught five of his seven targets for 41 yards and a touchdown against the Falcons. This is encouraging for Luke Musgrave, who played 75% of the snaps and caught three of his five targets for 50 yards. There was a play that I believe he could have scored a touchdown as well. It looks like his connection with Jordan Love is good. And even if Christian Watson, who I'm not sure is going to play his back, I think his role stands and Luke Musgrave becomes a good streaming option, especially this week against the Falcons.